<laughs> oh, those the the, the the Mark Wahlberg commercials, Direct TV. Uh, you can you can watch a uh, you can watch a uh, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> a random act comedy if that's what you're into. Because yes. uh, you, you know I'm loving those. Yeah. I love doing a good Mark Wahlberg impression. Like how you doing? How you doing? Say hi to your mother. Like Ferris when he sees the little guy from uh, Cartoon Network. <laughs> the Cartoon Network. And he's like. Sure thing, car uh, kid cartoon thing. <laughs> sure thing, kid cartoon thing. How you doing? My name's Mark. I'm Mark. Mark Wahlberg. Wahlbergers. My oh. stupid brother Donnie. <laughs> My dumb brother Donnie, who's married, who's married to that broad who doesn't think about, who doesn't like va the <laughs> vaccinations. <laughs> Mark. I'm telling you, Daniel Van Kirk. It's a stand-up comic. Daniel Van Kirk. He does a perfect Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg. impression. It, it, it is it, it amuses the fuck out of me. You go to YouTube and like he just starts like reading the alphabet as Mark Wahlberg. It's freaking great. Like you hit him in the the scar the, the scar, the scar brother is that but a scar floor. Hey, the cheap seats, yeah, cheap seats. Those guys, Squarborough Country. That's so, the best thing they ever did. <laughs> it, it was. They have like 1,500 podcasts now. But So, see, we, we just did like, what we did right now, we did a rolling start. That's the first time we've done a rolling start mm -hmm. on both the uh, the Twitch and the Facebook. We've been on for the last minute. Just me, I was joking about <laughs> Mac and Mac. So, all right, now, uh, we're going to go cold. Uh, and um, and uh, Sam's going to fart. I'm going to react. <laughs> and uh, we're, <laughs> then we're going to start the, start the audio for the show. So, we're going to go Quiet for a second. Damn it, Sam! Live from somewhere in Los Angeles, this is Dre's Geek Philosophy. The Monday edition, the May 15th edition. This, uh, we, are, we are live. If you're watching this on Facebook or watching this on Twitch, we are live right now. We are not dead. We are not dead. I, 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 we are not dead. I'm not dead. The, the, the team, we're all here. All three of us are here. Myself, Judgmental Nerd. Pete Molini, executively, oh, excessively long executive producer. Executively long. Executively long. You are executively long. You know that that's a great way to describe your penis. I am executively long. I don't. I don't have the standard size. I don't have the 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 the, the uh, coach class size. I have the executive size. Executive size. <laughs> executive size. <laughs> producer Sam Zia. You know this is why I love. Doing this show, this is this show. I, I need the, the I, you know, I need this show. I need the ridiculousness that we do. When we get here, we 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 we, we crack open a microphone, we turn on a couple cameras, and we act stupid. I love being stupid. It, it's a lot better than being sad. I, I love being stupid. And speaking of me being stupid, um. Earlier today, yeah. at at the at our alternate at our alternate recording site, Nostalgic Books and Comics, yep. in, in San Gabriel, California, uh, we uh, Mr. Pete Molini, uh, judgmental nerd Pete Molini, had me do a Facebook Live video for the East Los Angeles Comic Con today, <laughs> yeah, was... where it was an impromptu. I came out of the bathroom, <laughs> and Pete and Pete goes, "Hey, um, how about you do a Facebook Live video for <laughs> for the for the show?" And I'm like. Okay, I mean, I, I like being a jackass in front of a camera. So, uh, you know, who, 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 whom better, <laughs> whom better than good old Dre Cervantes? Yeah. And then we sat down. I, I, I whipped up a little script because we had to do some. We had to do some updates because we are we are five count them five days away five from days the longest away. day of your life. You, you are going to have the Jack Bauer level yeah. twenty four level kind of day, <laughs> uh, like Saturday. Like I, you're going to wake up to beep. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's already happening. I feel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, you, 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 you. I, I know you're already stressed out. Yeah, I mean, a it's, bit, it's, it's, a it's a, bit. it's a big endeavor, mm -hmm. endeavor of like yourself and and the crack team of geniuses that you have around you, yeah. working on this show with you. And I, I say that with tongue firmly planted in cheek. Just the crack team. It's, just it's, uh, you know. Keep, they keep things, it keeps things interesting. It, 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 that that is the most polite way we can put it. It does keep things interesting with the the, the crack staff and uh, and I, I you know it's funny because I, before I, I I told you I was a little insulted that you didn't ask me to be a part of the staff, but then uh, today I had that realization like you know what if I was a part of the staff like officially, <laughs> I would be losing my goddamn mind too. <laughs> But hey, the show's gonna get off the ground. We yeah. we, we did the video where I I, I, I gave out the updates. Uh, I I felt like I I did 
a what? okay job and I went back and watched the video and I would just like grab my I saw all my twitches I'm like all, all my ticks all my tick hey Enrique Cruz a member of the crack staff with a response on Facebook uh, uh, two words fuck you <laughs> and to you Enrique Cruz I say you're welcome I yeah. say it all with love uh, with love in my somebody try to call me in the middle of the goddamn show Good God! Have, the people haven't learned between the hours between eight and nine. I am occupied. Who the hell interrupted your kung fu? Oh, Sam Zia with the MVP freaking moment of the show right there, Sam Zia. Oh, you are my hero. You are the boss. You approve memos. You direct workflow. You eat a bagel <laughs> like a boss. With locks, bitches. With locks. <laughs> Interrupting me in the middle of my flow here. Yeah, that was... That, that, that's a, like, I, I will throw that person... Oh, yeah, I, I want to throw that person under the bus, but she's not watching. <laughs> I'm sure it's someone concerned for my well-being, but it's okay. Between uh, the hours of eight, between eight and nine... And she follows the show too. Oh, She's uh, so so guilty. That's that. that, that. Guilty. I'm mad. <laughs> this is the fun of watching Dre's Geek Philosophy live on... The sh that, on that, that, Facebook and Twitter. That's never Twitch. happened before, right? The, no, no, no one has attempted to call me dur well, during the show. Now, mo 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 I, most people who care about me <laughs> or would call me would be watching. <laughs> but this, this, this person, I, I, I'm going to give a severe tug lashing later, later on to him. Like, I know you, you're calling because you Phrasing. care. Phrasing. Phrasing. A severe tongue lashing. We have three viewers. I saw we were up to five viewers. I think I scared off a couple of people <laughs> on a... We had, we had almost the same amount of viewers on Twitch than we did on, on, on Facebook. This focus! Focus. Focus. How can I focus with this? So, the East LA Comic Con is happening this Saturday. This Saturday. El Gallo Plaza. Yep. East LA, literally in the heart of heart East Los East. Angeles. Right next to the 710 Freeway. If you are familiar with East LA, it's going to be right next to the 710 Freeway. As I got Sam's here right behind me, right here, and mm -hmm. I'm excited. I, I will be there. Yep. I, 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 as I said to you earlier, I will be the hand. I'll be the hand of the king the to, of use, the to use a uh, Game of Thrones reference. I, I, I will be there to assist you with all all, all the experience I have in working comic book conventions. Yeah. I will help you with everything. <laughs> I will help you with everything. You're Irv Danny Patampa on the Facebook. So you're so you're saying you're taking calls live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I'll take calls live and it'll interrupt the, the, the Facebook feed. <laughs> if you're watching on Twitch, then you'll be a okay. <laughs> but as far as the Facebook feed, it'll be fucked. <laughs> So I'm bringing Lily down to this... Uh, East LA Comic Con. I, yeah, I hope you get there early. Parking's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> uh, see, that's the thing. I get out of here, I think, at around 11. So we're going to be heading, probably getting there in the middle of everything. So let me know, and I'll be your Uber driver. <laughs> you can park over at Atlantic... <laughs> you can park at Atlantic Boulevard and, and Cesar Chavez. I will go pick you up in my Uber and bring you over. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to stick around just for a couple hours because so I have to work my way back here over again. But... I gotta see how this goes. This is gonna be. It's gonna be fun. interesting, man. It's gonna be interesting. I, I posted uh, any, this. Any any like celebrity cosplayers say they want to come in without you having to pay? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a thing, right? A lot of them that were like, "Hey, thing. pay pay for pay for me to come out." Yeah, or and it wasn't even like to be a vendor. It was just just to come out. Just to pay pay for my flight, pay for my hotel, yeah, and put I'll, put I'll, me in, in in the East LA Comic Con, and I'll be there. Um, no, that that went away kind of quick. I think. <laughs> well, once people realized that, that there there was no money to be had for yeah, cosplayers, there was no money for that. Um, <laughs> like, so but we... I, I posted this thing this morning, where I said, you know, like you know, it's, it's happening, and you know, there there's there's gonna be problems. I'm not I'm not oh, expecting the, the perfect show. At oh, all. It, it is. Oh, no, we are. <laughs> I, I, that that is partially why I I feel the pressing need to be there because I I'm like. <laughs> You called yourself earlier today when I when I was hanging out with you at Nostalgia Books and you said you were Smokey the Bear. You were putting out fires. Yeah, putting out fires. You were putting out fires yeah. like it was your job. Like you were yeah. Smokey the Bear with your shovel and your hat. <laughs> I, I talked to someone about it and he said it's it's similar to putting on a wedding. Like the closer you get the more problems arise. Yeah, so dude. It, like, it seems like I'm like, because you see these big corporations put on these giant shows and, yeah. and you're doing this and you've done it from the ground up. It's like yourself and about five other people mm -hmm. trying to handle all of this nonsense. Yeah, and it, it's crazy because I think it should have been, it should have been okay, but then it got bigger way too quickly. I, I think yeah, the show got a lot bigger than you realized. <laughs> yeah. It's putting those two magic words, man, Los Angeles. Yeah. Right next to Comic Con, it blew up. Hey, that, that I think it exploded, yeah. man. <laughs> when your Facebook page, that Facebook page, once you once you went live with the Facebook page, you're like, oh, fuck. 
thousand people instantaneously because pe people love comic books. I mean, yeah. it, it's cool to be a comic fan, and you know, all of a sudden you have this East LA Comic Con. I mean, w w wasn't the, the Stan Lee's uh, LA Comic Con people trying to yeah. intimidate you well, early they, on? They were upset about that for a little bit, but I think they got over it because we never heard anything. Yeah, I'm sure they realized like, oh, this is just a. Yeah. Local lo local show that just happens to make up. No one else had capitalized on the fact of being called East LA Comic Con. Yeah, really. like, that, that, honestly, that was the thing that surprised me the most mm -hmm. was that you were able to secure that name. Because I had a friend; she tried to uh, to do a convention mm -hmm. out, out like in Ventura, and like everything was taken. Like Ventura Comic Con, like you know, some mm -hmm. other people had had, had uh, squatted that name, mm -hmm. and like so she had to like go like it was like Pop Stuff Expo. Like that's oh. what she had to eventually like settle on to run her show. Yeah, and then uh, it was a nightmare for her too, yeah. and. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was quite surprised. I'm like, that you were able to get away with yeah. East LA Comic. I was like, oh, funny. really? Cool. The funny thing was about like five years ago, I think we had heard about a show called East LA Comic Con, mm -hmm. and I remember thinking like, oh, we have to go to that. We have to be a vendor at that. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I contacted them, I found out it was like an art show. It was like an art display thing. Oh, really? And then I was like, oh, that's not what I. Thought. I don't want to be racist, but it was mostly Chicano art. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess maybe it's not racism; it's the stereotype. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Being stereotypical here. And then I remember, like, we were still like, well, you know, we'll, we'll still go to this thing. You know, like, we can still get in, or whatever, right? And then it didn't end up happening because the guy uh, couldn't get a liquor license. <laughs> And well, they were gonna sell. They were gonna serve alcohol yeah. at this, at this uh, the the the, the first, uh, yeah. the precursor, the, this other East LA Comic Con. Yeah. They, they couldn't and, serve alcohol, and so serve, and so they just canceled it. So we're like, oh, and so I think that was people the, couldn't drink wine and, and look at Chicano art. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, we were, we were. I was like, I had the idea, like we should just have a show, like you know, like a real East LA Comic, well, an actual comic yeah. convention that's that's not run by Stanley and like, yeah, well, not the, the the LMD Standy Stan. Stan yeah. I'm a man, man, man. LMD Stanley. Yeah. Like, like, I, apparently, I cannot say that one time fast, <laughs> little <laughs> five times fast. And then, um, yeah, but then, like I said, like, it just it got, got out of hand. It got bigger than we expected. Quickly. I, 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 that's the that's the feeling I got <laughs> just from uh, from everything. Like every time we've talked, because I, I feel I, I've I've been to your Michael Corleone. I've been your Tom Hagen. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I have been your consigliere. <laughs> Whenever you have a problem, you come to me, yeah. and, I, and I am your Jewish lawyer. <laughs> and it tells you, all right, this is what you need to do. Just give me the heads up, I'm Fredo. There you go. <laughs> no, you're not Fredo. <laughs> you're like you, you got passion. You're Sunny. <laughs> you can't be Fredo. I'm, 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 I'm gonna be the first of us to go. That's for sure. There you go. Yeah, no, yeah. You don't want to be Fredo. The Fredo betrayed the family, man. For, 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 Fredo betrayed the family for some coke and some ass. You don't want to be Fredo. Hey, Cuban. I mean, come on, but still, you don't want to be the betrayer. You, you, you don't want me to run up to you and like fucking kiss you on the cheeks like I know it was you. I know it was you, Fredo. Will you kiss me? I've kissed, I, I have kissed you. Kiss my ass. I already have. You have kissed me on the head so many times. I, I have lost track how many times you kissed me. I left a hickey on there. On the top of the head. Drinking game here is the new drinking game. Every time I touch my head, apparently, <laughs> apparently, apparently that's the new drinking game, Sam. I, I learned that from a viewer earlier today at, at the at the store. That uh, apparently every time I touch my head, apparently I do it a lot. I, I'm bald. My, my head itches. <laughs> I, there, there ain't nothing going on up here except you know I have phantom hair syndrome. <laughs> 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 There used to be hair here. <laughs> it's never coming back. It only shows up on the sides. And I don't want to be that guy with the horseshoe. Does Trent ever like get pissed at you for stealing his shampoo? <laughs> uh, no, because I don't have to. <laughs> My roommate does not ever have to worry about missing shampoo because clearly, I don't need it. <laughs> You know what? You, you never, you've never had the idea of going full Hulk Hogan, <laughs> like, what, what just, like growing it out. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm just saying. Dry down. <laughs> you look like oh old, no! <laughs> you look like the old Mister. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Because <laughs> Mister. Satan basically is Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He is. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Goku. <laughs> as long as you drink your heat tap. He's Jufro Hogan. Jufro Hogan. Oh, we're losing viewers because I'm losing oxygen. <laughs> Jufro Hogan. Oh my God. That's literally what Mr. Satan is. He's Hulk Hogan. 
Holy shit! Is, you just realized that? Yeah! I, I, I thought he was just a piece of Look, shit! Goatee, everything yeah. about him is Hulk Hogan. It's Hulk Hogan. I, who knew a Curtis Toriyama was straight. such a wrestling fan? Yeah. Yeah. I knew Hulk Hogan spent time in Japan, but good God. Yeah, no, that was what it was supposed to be. Like, Because he was calling himself the world champion. And I'm the world champion. And like, they wanted to show what was... like. They wanted to poke fun at that. And say, no, this is real fighting. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. I'm gonna. I am the world champion. Because even his Emu's voice is pretty much Hulk Hogan. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like when I, when I was catching some. Uh, oh, what was I watching? Uh, I, I was watching uh, Dragon Ball Kai earlier. Then like he, like he was watching his daughter fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, there goes my daughter Videl. <laughs> oh shit! By the way, that uh, episode fifty-eight of Abridged came. Ah, uh, Dragon Ball Z Abridged came back. Oh, so amazing! I need to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> I need to watch it again and again because that, that's how you consume. Yeah. That, that is the proper way to consume Dragon Ball Z Abridged. All over again. <laughs> yeah. So, repeatedly. Now, the, now we're we're gonna make a a, a brief sojourn, very brief sojourn into the world of politics. Only because it relates to comic books. Yeah, I have learned today from Judge One Hundred Pete Malini and executive producer Sam Zia that apparently, if you go to your web browser and you type in hailhydra.com, <laughs> hail dash hydra, hail dash um, hydra. Sorry about that. Hail dash hydra.com. You were immediately taken to the whitehouse.gov site. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's hysterically funny. That's amazing. Like, I love the internet. Yeah. <laughs> the internet is so clever. It's too much. I, 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 I can't with this internet. Yeah. I love it. Hail-Hydro.com leads you right to the White House. Quite appropriately. It, it certainly feels like yeah. I, we, we, were, we, will not, we will not stay here in politics because no. I, I don't like talking politics because I, I, that's all I did for four years in college. You know, back when back when I thought the worst president ever, George W. Bush, was president, <laughs> little did I know <laughs> how wrong I was. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. That's another story. That's that. No, we we're, we're gonna just push that aside. We're gonna just move that over. Let me let me do it for the switch. All right, there we go. So, <laughs> why are these robots attacking my head on the switch? Hey, you you're, you you were the one who shot those robots out on on, on the switch. Like, Daddy, <laughs> you shot them out from from your sack. So. Something else uh, that happened today in the nerd world that, that, that kind of affects me, because I love comic books, and uh, no. obviously, Pete Malini, owner, no order. operator, sole proprietor of Sur Nostalgic Books Surrounded and Comics. By comics all Surrounded time. by <laughs> comics all day. That you, you have the life that I had for, for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, from when I was a young man, when I when I was a young man, when I had hair, you know, you know, the whole time I worked at Galaxy, I had hair. Oh. <laughs> I re I thought about that. I'm like, oh yeah, going back to the hair topic. I'm like, yeah, when I was a, when I was a young man, uh, the whole time I was a Galaxy, I had hair. I mean, I was probably losing it back here, but um, yeah, it wasn't until when I was a uh, Nintendo that uh, that I, I shaved off the uh, shaved my hair off, but. Uh, uh, DC announced the, this was crazy Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock. It's Doomsday happening. Clock. Because uh, the what they're doing, they're taking was it the, the Watch? Because uh, this whole DC rebirth that happened last year, yeah. they're tying into the Watchmen. They're tying the Watchmen into the DC universe, which is something that was very. They were very. They were sep uh, They were separate. It was, a, it was a, yeah. the Watchmen was a standalone story written by Alan Moore, and it was supposed to be that. It was supposed to be just that. But the the money hungry people at DC Comics said, "Fuck that noise. <laughs> we're going to integrate this to try to make more money." And then, people like Watchmen, you know. And people do like Watchmen. Yeah. I, I like Watchmen, but I, uh, I, I, I'm in, in my old man comic book. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I like Watchmen just the way it is. The, the yeah. twelve issues, or, or if you consume it as it is normal now in a giant graphic novel, you know, like that's what it is. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Yeah. It's very definite. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it, it was very definite and final how that book ended. Ta da! Yeah. And then DC a few years ago they did that uh, the, before Watchmen. Before Watchmen, they did a, they, they, they 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 did the Star Wars Episode One of, yeah. of, of, of Watchmen uh, before Watchmen. But see, the big difference was that it was pretty good. It, it was. was. It was actually pretty good. I didn't read it. I, I was just I, I was just was, very uh, uh, in my old man stance. I was very much against it. And ironically, not ironically, but I mean, I guess you don't actually have to. Know about Watchmen, Watchmen to read it to, to enjoy the before Watchmen. Because I, I know they, they put some of their best creators on. You know, yeah. it was Azarello, Darren, uh, uh, Darren Cook, Darren Cook, and then you had uh, Straczynski. Uh, Straczynski, Joe Straczynski. Yeah. Also, writer. Uh, what I learned a couple weeks ago, Joe Straczynski wrote for the first season of the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Yes, he did. Yeah, <laughs> old, that old cartoon from the eighties. Yeah, a, a, a esteemed comic book writer slash real book writer and wrote it. That's why it was really good on YouTube, by the way. 
on YouTube. Also on, on the, it, it's on it's on the Netflix right now. Oh, sorry, yeah, Netflix. Nice. On Netflix. And the Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, Babylon, Babylon Five. Babylon Five. That's correct. Yeah, okay, yeah. and some some really good books back yeah. in the late nineties and early two Ks. But yeah, so like, it was it was actually really good. Like, like the before I, Watchmen. I, I, I've read Watchmen a few times. I'm not a huge fan of it. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, like, there's nah. people who are like. That's my catch on the rye, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that book is my catch on the rye. <laughs> I, I have multiple copies of that book. That book I, fucked me up, dude. That that book ruined me. <laughs> that and Preacher and Transmultropolitan ruined me as a comic book reader. Okay, so as a guy who wasn't as avid into comic books mm-hmm. as yes. I am into comic book movies. Uh huh. Because I never read any of the Watchmen stuff, but okay. I did see the movie. You saw the, the the interesting Zack Snyder take on it. What did I miss? What was the thing? I for the people who have some idea that, and now like mm-hmm. you're talking about the news, how it's going to affect people like yeah. me who are just now really starting to get. On, into on, honestly, my my first viewing. Oh, I, let me, mm-hmm. let me I, I want you yeah. to, to to weigh in on this, but I want to tell you yeah. my, my feelings. I, I I saw Watchmen when it came out. In theaters, and I, obviously, like I said, it's it's my catch in the rye. I own multiple copies of that book. <laughs> that at that point was probably one of the most faithful comic book adaptations like ever done. Like there was, I mean, it was like it's an actual okay Zack Snyder movie because yeah. he, he he very much like for ninety percent of the movie he stuck to the original thing. Like he stuck to a lot of like what a lot of the imagery from you know he took this two D book and turned it into a three dimensional book. That there were some wholesale change, like they they changed the ending. So, it was a lot less depressing and weird. Yeah. Or, uh, well, they changed the ambience so it would make more sense to people mm-hmm. who don't read comic books. Because in the comic book, he didn't create a bunch of clones of Dr. Manhattan. He created a, a giant alien that came down and attacked the Earth and forced the entire world to unify against it. And he created that world peace at the end of it. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't read yeah. Watchmen or watched the movie. Sorry, <laughs> but it's, the statute of limitations is way up on that. Because yeah. so, like, in, the, in, in the movie, they had oh, dog, a bunch of Dr. Manhattans, and they used him to unify the world against him. And so the, the quote-unquote the bad guy, Ozymandias, yeah. he freaking, oh, he, he tricked the world into unifying against this threat. Yeah. In, in, in the comic book, it was a giant freaking... Cthulhu looking yeah. alien giant vagina. But <laughs> see, I think that, that, that it killed a... the entire no, but they killed the entire New York in the comic yeah. book. They did, yeah, the entire all of New York City is dead in the comic book. Well, that's what they did in the movie too. Did did they kill uh, yeah, everyone they, in New York? They yeah. blew up New York City. Yeah. Oh, did they? Okay, I that's said, what, that's uh, they all I remember was like I remember was being like being the the you know I can't believe they changed this. They made <laughs> Doctor Manhattan the bad guy, and I'm like I can't believe this. I'm so unhappy. But the rest of the movie was really good, except for the awkward five minute sex scene. <laughs> <I'm gonna> say, <laughs> yeah, that was the other thing yeah. in the book. It was literally three panels. Yeah. <laughs> and in the movie, it was the most awkward five minutes <laughs> in cinema where you just watch... The freaking like, Hallelujah playing that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I was like, yeah, yes, we get it. You you want to show people fucking. It's an... You know, cause, uh, was it R-rated? I, yeah. yeah, yeah R- R- Watchmen was R-rated. And they, I'm like, uh, did they really... I remember like the, the, my buddy at Warner Bros. who had took, he, he let me go to an early screening to see it. I remember I, I turned to him and I apologized. I'm like, dude, it was only supposed to be like... In the book, it was three panels, and like we're everyone just sitting there awkwardly, like watching freaking <laughs> Night Owl and and uh, uh, Miss Jupiter yeah. was, like have sex. Oh no, Silk Silk Spectre, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, her mom was yeah. was, was Miss Jupiter, but and then the, the fireball. At the end. <laughs> no, yeah, th- there were a few weird things, but the rest of the movie was very much faithful yeah. to the, to the actual uh, source material, which I, I'm a big stickler for that. Yeah, personally. That, that's me. But, I mean, but what are your feelings? What are your what were your feelings? Now, now I've said my piece. What are your feelings no, about yeah, this piece? It, 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 he kept it really close. I think. I mean, I don't want to say he cut the fat, but they, he took a lot of the. Because I mean, when I, like I guess I've read Watchmen a few times. Mm-hmm. But you're not a big I, fan. I, I, of I will it. admit that a lot of the essay stuff, like it kind of goes over my head. There's some stuff. What well, the, the the because of the, the the stuff in between? Yeah. I see. When I was younger, I used to skip over all oh, that I, shit. <laughs> When when I when I did readings, I would skip over the yeah. the weird like because I'm like what, what's all this text in the middle of this comic book? Yeah. Why <laughs> why am I doing so much reading? This is bullshit. It's but like, I went back and read it. And I'm like it all it filled in a lot of histor- historical yeah, gaps. But it just kind of like it, I, I think that was stuff that, that was cut out of the movie. Obviously, mm-hmm. yeah, then, they they cut all that out. And then like all the pirate stuff was um, the, Legend of the Breakfast yeah. Trader. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I feel like yeah, he 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 co- he compressed it. Because Watchmen could have easily been like a, a freaking miniseries. Yeah, like they could have been like a, a HBO show. <laughs> like, I, and honestly, I, I that probably I, I feel like that probably would have been more successful if they did that. Yeah. Like like what, what they've done with Game of Thrones. Like if they had turned it into a miniseries or something that people could just watch over the course of several hours, that might have been 
technically yeah. a better way to go. Yeah. But no, hey. War- Warner's. I mean, obviously, Warner Bros. They they, they they have the opposite problem of Marvel, where they control everything yeah. within the DC universe because it's all underneath their house. Where Marvel in the '90s, when they were broke, it's were so selling cool. everything off. Like, hey, we need money. Hey, <laughs> Sony, buy Spider Man. Yeah. Here, Fox, buy the rights to the X Men. You know. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think Watchmen. It was. No, it's a good movie. It's just it, it's, it hit all the major plot points. Yeah. The, the, the the movie it hit all the major everything that you need to know and that was important about the Watchmen. You know, Doctor Manhattan was basically kind of like Space Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Night Owl is an analogy for fucking Blue Beetle slash yeah. Batman. You know, yeah. the comedian is like the Punisher, which was a well, the comedian is like a Punisher like character. Like because originally all those character all, all six of those characters were supposed to be actual DC comic book characters, yeah. but DC once they read the script. They were like, no, you cannot use our character. <laughs> like, it was supposed to be Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, Black Canary, uh, uh, the, the, the Peacemaker. Um, oh, 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 um, the I'm, Question. The Question, yeah. yeah. Like, all, all these different characters that you know, were part of the DC Universe, and they're like, no, 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 you need to change all this because <laughs> you're having them fuck, you're having them kill, you're having them be like, no, we can't, we can't have this happen. <laughs> and it's funny, did you ever read uh, uh, Multiversity? I have multiverse. I just I I don't think, I I don't have all the issues, so well, I never finished reading there's it. There's an issue with him and Frank Wiley mm-hmm. where they do <gasps> yeah they they do yes with the original DC characters they were supposed to be. I, I remember that because yeah. like the, the the way even the, the the way the book was structured was still it had the, the nine the, the, yeah. the nine panels yeah because that's the thing a lot of people miss about the the, the comic book it, like, even visually everything was plotted out visually like everything was nine panels like it was either nine panels. Or th- or three panels that were like three panels wide. If you go through the entire book, yeah, yeah. it's either one giant splash page. Or it's all split into thirds. It's like it's 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 crazy visual. Like when you think about how much mentally was put into this book, that's why I love it so much. It was like the, there was so there were so many layers to it. It was yeah. it, it was insane how much that that, that, that book was just. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but they're doing this thing where they okay they're taking this property which was kind of like left alone for a long time and now they're integrating it. Into the, into the current DC universe to boost sales. I mean, yeah. it's going to come down the line. This is like something that's happening. They they announced it today because, yeah. as Pete will tell you, uh, ordering comic books like, or, <laughs> or being a comic book uh, proprietor is very difficult, and like you have to make predictions like months in advance. Like I need to order, I have to order this product three months in advance, and I have to guess how many my <laughs> I have to guess how many books my comic customers want. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they announce it now. You'll probably get to order it in like in a couple months. Yeah. Well, at least, but let's see. No, coming out in November. So you'll be ordering it like in September. In September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the crazy thing about comic books. Like you have to like. You kind of have to. You, guess. you have to kind of guess <laughs> and hope and pray that oh I ordered enough or I ordered too many. Oh, like I, I didn't order. Yeah. See, art is forgetting. Oh, see, art. You are freaking damn it, art. You should know better. It's Monday night. I just got a, a, a PlayStation party invite. <laughs> and it just came up on my phone, too. Art is inviting you to a party. And he's going to be like, oh, shit, the podcast. <laughs> Still podcasting, man. It's only freaking 8.30. Come on. Wait, but, so so how, what do you, how do you feel about this, that they're integrating the Watchmen? I mean, if, it's annoying. I mean, again, like I said, I, it's annoying to someone like me. Like, I, I, if, it, if it pleases the majority of people, then good. You know, that, that's all... That's all that's all good, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I kind of want to read it because it, it's obviously it's going to tie into Superman. It's going to yeah. tie into Batman and Flash. Some of the characters that I really do enjoy right now. And then one of their best writers is writing it, Jeff Johns. Johns. Uh, he hasn't written comics since, uh, well, Rebirth. The, 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 was it the last time he actually wrote a, read it? Before well, that, it's been, he's been busy working on television. and <laughs> Writing a Batman movie. and like, Writing a Batman movie. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but, you know, it... it I liked what they did in that, that Rebirth comic yeah. that came out a year ago, or almost a year ago. I yeah, forget when it came. Yeah. I, I like I like Jeff Johns what he like, what he writes because I really think uh, uh, Gary Frank is doing the art. Gary Frank, that yeah. I'm like. You don't like Gary Frank really? Uh, he, he, uh, he, it's kind of it's not that I don't like him. It's kind of take it or leave it for me. Oh, I got you, got you. Because he he I don't, know, I don't know something about his art style kind of just like eh, kind of yeah. like I'm like eh, <laughs> meh. Got you, got you. But. But but the, the weird thing is that the, apparently it's not going to be caught in part of continuity or it is going to be it's some it, it, sort of weird thing where see well continuity Sam I feel like it's where everything kind of if it fits into history or yeah, if it's a standalone within the, within the universe or if it's a standalone thing that kind of like oh this is a story that we decided to write for funsies yeah <laughs> I'm sure yeah no, I get it. 
So like DC back in the day. They Thank used... you for explaining, though, for people who don't. For people who don't understand, yeah, the continuity is, is a big thing in the world of, of, of comic books. Yeah, they had a, well, the, the, well, the, the big for the big DC event was the, was the original Crisis on Multiple Earths yeah. was to fix all that because okay. DC back in the day they would do stories that made no sense and then they were just like, oh, it takes place in this timeline. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, no, because because uh, uh, prior to nineteen eighty seven, it was very difficult to read a DC comic book because there was like three Superman, there were multiple Batman, Batman. There, it, it, it was very it, it was very hard to read. So like yeah. there, in nineteen eighty seven, DC decided to like, all right, we're gonna hit the reset button. We're gonna kill a shitload of characters, and then we're gonna start over fresh with like, okay, we have one Superman, we have one Batman, we have one Wonder Woman, yeah. one Flash, and like, and this is gonna be our continuity from here on out. And then about every ten or fifteen years, they yeah. kind of hit the button again. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, we need people to buy comic books. Hit the button again. <laughs> Reset everything. And now I'm gl- I-, I love yeah. that you brought that up because that's going to lead into our main topic of this evening. Main topic. We're, we're, now, our main topic. Main topic. We're going to talk about comic book movies because right now that is the, you know, that is the, the, the topic du jour. People love comic book movies. We, as, as I frequently tell people, we live in the golden age of being a nerd because it is totally acceptable to love comic books right now, and I feel it is, it's mainly, uh, comic book movies are mainly responsible for it. Oh, yeah. The, the, the acceptance of friggin' Iron Man and Batman, like that, that, 2008, I feel that was like, that was the year. They started you know? it all, yeah. yeah. We had that Iron Man movie, we had the, the, that, the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, two of the best comic book movies are the most accessible comic book movies mm-hmm. to, to, to average people. Yeah. Where people are like, oh shit. It's cool to like combo characters because then you had RDJ being badass freaking Tony Stark. You had freaking the follow up to Batman Begins. You had freaking, you had, well, well, you know what? That was that was a Joker movie. Yeah. That was not a Batman movie. That was yeah. a Joker. Heath Ledger, freaking yeah. nailed the Joker perfectly. He like, his, that version of the Joker was freaking. It's gonna be timeless. They're gonna be talking about that Joker like freaking fifty years from I now. I mean, the best example of that is that like they went with this Joker in Suicide Squad. You can kind of tell they're like, we he, don't want to do that. What's the opposite of that, or like what's different, you know? And like, because mm-hmm. they were just so afraid of like touching that. No, they they can't. I mean, like, yeah. that's, that's why he decided to be like the Ed, Ed Grimley yeah. Joker, <laughs> or the or, oh, he's Ventura. No, it's Ace Ventura Joker. Yeah. Somebody stop me. Yeah, he killed it. Yeah. He really did. The the role you, I mean, really, you he may have set an impossible standard. No, he, like, he did. Sure he did. No, that, that they yeah. it's almost they take. I mean, I feel bad for Jared Leto because yeah. he. Yeah, it's impossible to follow that up. I mean, the only other awesome Joker is a voice in Mark, Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, but I was say, short of, you know, CG Mark Hamill's face to make him young. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's, the only, that's the only way we'll get to something like that. So it is ex- acceptable to be a comic book fan. But, so, the, 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 the conundrum that I feel that we are in is that the movies that are being made now, like, so ever since 2008, so like Marvel themselves... They, they they've been they've been cranking out these movies now two a year. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's been two a year now for the last few years. But since two thousand eight, they've created this movie universe. Yeah. It's the first time that they they've successfully kind of made it so if you follow the narrative across all these movies, you will get a much quote unquote richer experience. Yeah. Like for for people like myself, and for for Pete, we're big comic book oh, fans. Yeah. Yeah. Creating this continuity. As I, oh, this is amazing. Stuff that happens in each of these movies affects other things. Mm-hmm. Or like you have like, like, like for example, like, you know, Big Trouble in Little Shadow. That's a self-contained movie. You love that movie. That is one, one of, uh, Sam Zia, that is one of your favorite movies yeah. of all time. Last Dragon also. Last Dragon. See, like, as opposed to all these self-contained movies or yeah. movies that fit within like kind of an, like, uh, like, uh, like, like Harry Potter. You had those yeah. seven books, but then that was, you had those seven books and that was, it no. where Marvel has kind of created this universe where that they're they're trying to keep it going. That it's been going now for what nine well, uh, nine been, years. Well, yeah, they said uh, Infinity War is going to be the ten year anniversary. Yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, Infinity War next year. It'll yeah. be, be ten years. They've had this narrative going on over the course of this ten years. Now the 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 the, the question I ponder here is how where are they going to go from this? Because I feel you have two different types of people watching these movies. You have the hardcore people like myself and Pete. We go out of our way to watch it. You no know, night of, yeah, midnight. We we follow everything along. I could tell you of the every yeah. trail of the Marvel movie universe, like where every Infinity Stone. Like we were just yeah. where all the Infinity Stones are. I'm like, all right, who has what? We don't know where the Soul Gem is. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> but oh, what was it the Soul Gem? Yeah, yeah it was Soul Gem that we, we we we've lost track of. We don't know where that one is. But then you have people. I feel maybe you fall more into this category where you maybe don't, or you're not following this narrative, but the movies are. Fun, 
action packed. Hilarious. And, and if you go and like say if you saw Iron Man one, like mm-hmm. I did, opening night, right? Uh, you r- really quickly fall into the hype of the entire universe. Well, it kind of it kind of brings you in, right? right you know, all of a sudden, like you stay past, you know, uh, that kind of really started yeah. the whole staying past the credits thing. You're like, oh, stay past the credits. All of a sudden, like, holy shit! Yeah. What the hell? Samuel Jackson. And for comic nerds like us, we're like, oh shit, they did Black Nick Fury. Fuck yeah, the one from the Ultimates. Like, holy shit, they're crossing continuities. Oh my god, because it, it was in the comic books. Yeah. They, they had a separate, or um, Marvel created a separate universe called the Ultimate Universe, where it was kind of an, uh, a modernization of it Spider-Man. Like, that might have been like yeah. the testing ground for the movies, you know, where it was maybe. Like- yeah, you know, yeah. Like, this is modern takes. Because it was like they did. Because the first one was Spider Man, where like, they had this Ultimate Spider Man comic book, which at that time that was my favorite comic book. Yeah. yeah like this, this writer Brian Michael Bendis wrote this amazing Spider Man, where it was like it was it was if if Spider Man became if, if Peter Parker became Spider Man in the year two thousand instead of you know nineteen sixties or whatever. Yeah. Like, gosh darn it, I'm a nerd. Uh, uh, Spider Man twenty twenty was uh, no not not twenty ninety nine no 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 this one's called Ultimate Spider Man and it was it was a, it was a modernization like yeah. oh let's say a kid at that time or, or a modern kid it's kind of like the the Spider Man that we saw in, in Civil War that's pretty, yeah. I feel that's kind of like the the the, the equivalence yeah. of, of, the, of this Ultimate, Ultimate Spider Man where it's oh if a modern kid not Tobey Maguire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no there's a podcast coming in the future where I'm gonna destroy those fucking movies but. Let me oh. calm down. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm gonna rip those movies to fucking shreds. Oh my god, you just. I just gave you a giant boner, I know. Ah, uh, sorry. Every time I see you just angry, I'm like. Oh, oh that, that's coming. When Spider Man Homecoming comes out, I'm gonna destroy the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. But that's a stu- subject for another day. But, so there was this book called Ultimate Spider Man. It was a modernization of what well, were all these modern elements, like, you know, of cell phones and, and social networking and all this stuff, where how Peter Parker would relate to people in the modern world. And it was literally one of the best books. Yeah. Like it's, hands down, he wasn't. He wasn't a photographer. He was like the web designer. For yeah, the, yeah. He was a web designer for 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 his high school, <laughs> and it, it, it was really interesting. Yeah. And the the way they handled everything, like my my favorite issue of the of the run was one where he was never in the suit. It was the tw- it was like the when he tells Mary Jane oh. that he's Spider Man, and it was freaking hilarious. Yeah. It was the whole and then the whole time Aunt May thinks that they're that they're trying to have sex. Yeah. <laughs> It it is uh, and, and Aunt May is modernized. She's not like a bitty old lady. She's like she's an older lady, but she's not like she's not stupid. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. or, or I, I shouldn't say stupid. She's uh, like she uh, she's ready. Like in Spanish, we say bien lista, bien lista, yeah. real ready. You know, on top of shit. Like that, that Aunt May was like that was like that was like one of my favorite Aunt Mays. Yeah, because at one point, like she she was wondering because he didn't disappear. She thought he was on drugs, and she thought he was like <laughs> yeah, like he's running out to go be Spider Man. She thinks like, oh, are you on drugs? Yeah. Or, are you on cocaine? Yeah. What, what's wrong, Peter? I, I need you to find out. Yeah. Or yeah. Or I can't fam on Facebook. An aunt that can take care of herself. Where in the in in the old days it was like, oh, Peter was doing everything to kind of help take care of Aunt May. Where Aunt May was handling her shit. <laughs> she didn't. Uh, she wasn't yeah. dependent on Peter. Peter was more dependent on her. Because the old comic, she was really old. Like she's like she was old on the verge of dying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my God. Every every other issue, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have. Like, oh God, if she ever found out Spider Man, she'd have a heart attack because she <laughs> she hated Spider Man, yeah. right? Yeah, because because the newspaper said he was a menace. And, the newspaper uh, said it, and then she believed it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so they created this, this alternate universe, this ultimate universe, and then in that universe, they li- they literally got permission from Samuel Jackson, like, hey. Can we like because they made yeah. they made, instead of uh, it was instead of white Nick Fury they made black Nick Fury yeah and they they literally got permission from uh, from Sam Jackson can we make him look like you and he's like and of course be, Sam Jackson being the cool motherfucker that he is he's like yeah. fuck yeah of course he can make a character look like me <laughs> fuck yeah he can and so it when totally looks like him like, and, it's, and like you go back and you look at the comic book uh, Brian Hitch was an yeah. artist on that one yeah. and it looked like Samuel Jackson so when the movie comes around and Marvel goes like shit. We need to get Sam Jackson to be Nick Fury. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, we're doing this crazy thing. We're gonna make a bunch of movies tied together. Do you want to be Nick Fury? <laughs> and he showed. And then, so, end of Iron Man one. Like the the world just got a lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. Like, holy shit! Like yeah. nerds, we we freaking jizz in our pants. Yeah, because I remember thinking like. When the very first movie they drop Avengers, like yeah, they say Avengers, yeah, at the very end, like we're doing it, like it's just it's, it's happening. Yeah, at, at some point in the future, we're gonna build towards an Avengers movie, which yeah. turned out to be one of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. But when are we gonna see more Howard the Duck shit? 
You know what? That, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like... I, they teased that, it twice. They teased <laughs> it twice? Like, maybe they'll do a Netflix? I mean, if this Netflix thing really takes off, I mean, like, as awful as Iron Fist, I hear, is, I mean, maybe we'll get a Howard the Duck show. I mean, well, it's <laughs> or maybe a, 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 you know, or I don't know. It's hit and miss. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's been absolutely hit and miss. Uh, you, you had Daredevil, which has been great. Yeah. You had uh, Jessica uh, Jones, which I personally loved. Luke Cage, which was I need to watch great. that. Well, I enjoyed that one a lot. And then and Iron really, Fist was if Iron, uh, Iron Fish. Iron Fish. <laughs> if Iron Fist was the the worst of the lot. Then I, and they have what the new what the, the defen- Defenders, Defenders is coming out, yeah. and then uh, they just announced uh, there's gonna be a Punisher one ne- next yeah. year yeah. With, with John Barenthal's great portrayal uh, of the Punisher. Yeah. They're doing a great job on Netflix so far. They, I, if they only have one letdown in Iron Fist, I get the feeling that if they mm. do decide to come out with something. How maybe maybe they'll, they'll, they'll do some. So I, I feel like that'd be something that we're, they'd have a lot of fun with because because oh, yeah. because in the old comic books it was something that they did they yeah. kind of had a ball with. It was freaking just for funsies, ignoring the the George Lucas freaking yeah. um, <laughs> Howard the Duck movie where we get some duck it would fucking. Have a lot of under, underground like swell building up where because of his appearances in both of the, uh, the Guardians oh, yeah. movies. There, if people they announce they're going to do a Howard the Duck uh, series on Netflix. You, you people would watch. It might be one of the biggest ones that people would watch. Ones. I don't know if it'd be the biggest one, of the biggest ones, but I think people would watch. You know, no, people would be interested. Drawn to it, real, just instantly. Well, because well, now the, the, the they've created this Marvel brand, and this is why. Yeah. Like, so there, I feel there's a lot of people who watch it because, like, a lot of people are watching these movies simply because they're Marvel movies, and and for the most part, all of them are. Pretty, I mean, there's a there's a lot of humor. Yeah. Like even even the, at, at its most serious, like uh, what no. Uh, I want Winter Soldier. I feel like yeah. was probably the most serious movie. Still it was still pretty funny. It was like on your left, yeah. dick. <laughs> 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 or like just them going to the Apple Store and freaking yeah. like comedian. Oh, it was like freaking uh, T.J. Miller. <laughs> like I'm gonna help you with your. I'm gonna help you with the iPhone, pretty redhead lady. <laughs> I'm T.J. Miller. <laughs> but it, yeah, it, then we were talking about earlier how we. I don't know if there's, there's a lot of people that don't watch them all. Yeah, that's like I think yeah. so, some people. I probably th- think they they kind of pick and choose, and yeah. maybe they only watch the ones with the Avengers in them. Like mm-hmm. I don't know how many people watched Ant Man because I um, Ant Man did well. I mean, I'm sure they were. So, I, I feel like that was probably the first one where I thought that they could have possibly quote unquote failed. Yeah, I mean, like, or like you know, a little inside baseball. You know, before Guardians of the Galaxy one became the giant hit. Year before, I, I, I told this story on this show before. I was like, "Yeah, Disney had no clue how the movie was gonna do. We got a talking raccoon, got a talking raccoon, <laughs> and a walking tree. We had a raccoon with a machine gun. <laughs> yeah, like I, I was in that meeting at Disney where they were talking. They were like, the publicity department was talking about it. Was um, we don't uh, we are where we were before Iron Man one, where we didn't. We're not sure how this movie is gonna do. Like we obviously they want it to succeed, but. That was that was perceived as that could have been the first failure, like because they completely go off off the rails, like yeah. oh Guardians of the Galaxy, and they choose they choose to go with freaking Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Star Lord, Drax, yeah. and Gamora. It's like these are people like only the hardest of the hard. Yeah. Like, that literally that was the only reason I was put in that Disney movie, I mean, the Disney meeting, because I knew who those characters were, <laughs> and I could tra- I could translate the nerd for them. Yeah. Like like I had some friends who were on that on that team working on. They're like, "You're coming with us because you know this shit. <laughs> we need you to tell us what the fuck is up with these with these characters and translate the nonsense that Marvel's gonna throw at us." Yeah. And I sat in that two hour meeting, <laughs> listening to all this and like having my jaw hit the ground as I learned the entire tapestry of the Marvel universe going forward. And like, oh, there's an NDA. And now, now that we've reached the point where. <laughs> Beyond the knowledge I have, I'm like, I can talk about all this stuff now. Hooray! <laughs> and it was not, it, like, they, they were very concerned, but now it's like, it's to the point now, like, oh, I, I feel like Marvel probably thinks like they're invincible. They can put out anything. Yeah. And uh, and, and people are going to watch it. But it, yeah, and then and that's my conundrum. We're like, so they've, they've built this thing where like we have this giant story arc where we're like, we're just leading to Infinity War. Infinity War. And then the year after that, in 2019, yeah. there was a second Avengers movie. It was Infinity War Part 2, but now it has been changed. Like, oh, it's gonna it's an untitled Avengers movie. Yeah. Which I'm sure they're, 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 I'm sure they're pulling a Lord of the Rings and filming at the same time right oh, now. Yeah. with Because, oh, they, we got everybody here. Fuck it, let's crank out two movies. Yeah. It's the same directors, same cast. Yeah. Let's, keep going. let's fucking do it. <laughs> pay, pay everyone double and get them the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> and get, get going. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're hoping that, that that Avengers movie comes out this time next year, mm-hmm. is it cross the billion mark, just like Iron Man three, because I think that that's going to be the expectation. Yeah, because you're going to have 
everyone in it. You're going to have Sp- you know, all the Avengers. You're going to have Spider-Man. You're going to have freaking the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians, yeah. It's going to be a big thing. Gonna, we're going to finally lead up to that the big bad that we saw at the end of that the, the first Avengers movie, mm-hmm. Thanos. We, we've built up, like, like personally, one of my favorite villains of all time. Because like when I, when I was in sixth grade, I read the Infinity Gauntlet. And that, mm-hmm. that, see, that was one of the first comic books that totally warped my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Like that was the first time my brain was 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 damaged by comic books. So, like my brain has been, <laughs> my brain has been irreparably warped by comic books over my entire life. I remember when when they first they did that drop at the end of Avengers, and then they, you know. No explanation, just like... No explanation, just they, show they, Thanos, they and show like, Thanos. nerds fucking just like, the fuck, and then people who, who and then people who don't know, like, so, Sam, you, you, you watched the first Avengers movie, right? Yes. Presumably. At the end of the movie, you had no clue who the fuck the purple guy was, right? I had no clue, but I was around people who did. Who did? And I felt... You, you, the, watched the, you watched their orgasms come out? I felt the general boners around me lift me <laughs> off my seat. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this must be something substantial. It's, it's, it was, it, for, for nerd, see, and, that, and that's the crux of what I'm talking about. Like, it, it's a very different viewing experience for a nerd compared to a yeah. non nerd. Where, but of course, like, but you, but you saw all the nerds lose their shit around you. Yeah. And, well, and you know, same, kind of, it, it was the same level of shit loss that I saw after the first Iron Man. Oh, like, yeah. okay. Well, fuck everyone. Like, we see freaking Samuel Jackson with eye patch. Yeah, what Samuel the hell? Jackson pop out. I was like, Okay, this is significant. <laughs> Fights. And, and it was just, just by seeing his face, I knew it was significant. And then when I saw Thanos, I was like, okay, this is the same level it was, of significance. So, yeah. and that's and this is like, this is the problem. I feel like well, I don't know what they could possibly. Okay, so in 2019, once you know the Avengers defeat Thanos or whatever, mm-hmm. um, what could they possibly yeah. do at the end of that movie mm-hmm. that could possibly bring everyone back? Because like we, we've told this, you know, at that point it'll be an eleven-year story. <laughs> yeah, at that point, like, we yeah. we've led up to this eleven-year story. What can Marvel possibly do after that? And that, yeah. I think I think that's the problem that they're going to have. to... I mean, I'm 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 sure people far smarter than me yeah. <laughs> and have that, or people with the same foresight as uh, as me sitting at Marvel Studios. Hmm? Sorry, what? Foresight, not oh. foreskin. Okay. Foresight, not foreskin. <laughs> Gutter, my friend, gutter. <laughs> People with the same foresight as me mm-hmm. have, have they see this problem come? It's, oh, yeah. Sean Hornbuck on Facebook Live with a snap of Thanos. I hope that happens where Thanos snaps his fingers and wipes yeah. out half the universe. Yeah. I would be immensely pleased <laughs> if that would happen because that's a, that's a significant moment in the original comic book. Because so in the comic book, Thanos gets a hold of all six of these Infinity Stones, puts them all together, and you control all of time and space. <laughs> you control the universe if you have all six of these things together. You control everything. Because you literally control time, space, power, reality, <laughs> soul, mind. and the mind. All six elements of the universe. You control them all at once. Like, yeah, I'm sure you've seen in these movies, like one of these fucking stones can, yeah. can cause all kinds of ridiculous stuff. Right. You get all six of them together. You put them all together. On, like, obviously, the, the, the glove that you saw at the end, at the end of, was it the uh, end of, uh, which one was Age it? Age, was it Age of Ultron? Age when of you Ultron. see Thanos reach in, grab the glove, and like, ah, oh, you know, I'll do it myself. selling, I think, the... The, Infinity Gauntlet? The, the toy. The toy, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I was at Target yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, because no, 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 it's been a thing. I mean, it's obviously been a thing. I mean, uh, if you ever played the old Marvel Super Heroes video game, Thanos was the last boss, and you had to like, beat the Infinity Gems out of him. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it, uh, it's all leading, but my, my, my question is, like, what could they possibly do yeah. to follow that up to continue this narrative mm-hmm. of all these Marvel movies, to continue to be breaking in all of the money because yeah. you because already oh see the, uh, there's a theory that you had earlier because yeah. I because I was saying you know RDJ is not getting any younger yeah oh <laughs> uh, you know Chris Evans doesn't want to be Captain America forever yeah uh, Hemsworth I mean well Hemsworth I heard was complaining that he, it's just working out so much is like messing him up or something like right because like, he has he has to walk around being all super buff you yeah. know it's it's, not, it's, it's it's I'm sure it's very time consuming and, and insane for him to to look like Thor yeah. all the time. But uh, I, I want you to share well, your theory. With that role, by the way, he's going to deflate like Kevin. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Did you see Supergirl? Like Kevin Sorbo is still pretty. Uh, he's pretty big. Man. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, I haven't watched the show. He got tiny though. Like, yeah. He got. Super oh yeah, he's not. He's not he Hercules awesome, big anymore. No, 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 Pete. Pete, I want you to share your theory, uh, the theory that you had earlier on, like what could Marvel do. To kind of to where, where they would go forward, yeah. After after I mean, this, after the the, the the second Infinity movie, Avengers: The Infinity Gauntlet, whatever they're gonna call it. We talked about. We talked about. I know we talked about. I think it gets. I did a lot more prep today. Yeah, 
it, it would it be unreasonable mm-hmm. that they kill off a lot of the major Avengers, and then we we step into this next generation of Avengers uh, of, of new of, of new Avengers. Of new Avengers. Like, honestly, yeah, I, I saw that uh, uh, right there. Yeah, like honestly, like I would I don't, I don't know if they would actually do it, but I think you could get away with doing a War Machine movie. And mm-hmm. bringing back some of the Iron Man cast, and bringing back Pepper Potts and mm-hmm. some Happy and all that. Well, I don't know if Pepper Potts yeah, will come back. <laughs> uh, I, I got some. I got, I got some of that inside yeah. information. <laughs> Marvel being not pleased with her and her her behavior during junkets. But I mean, and then like you 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 set up the Winter Soldier, um, and then at the very you, end, you make Winter Soldier the new Cap. You make him the new Cap because I'm sure Sebastian Stan costs way less oh, yeah. <laughs> than Chris Evans at this point. You know, you do Because I think it's also a cost issue. Oh, because, yeah. like, you, I mean, what, like, RDJ made, like, $50 million off that first Avengers, and I'm sure he's, he's getting paid much more than that since then. Oh, yeah. He, he, was, he was a smart one. Like, give me a couple points on this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a salary. Give me a couple points off the gross. And, oh, shit, that's $50 million. Fuck everything. <laughs> so, you know, you have, you can replace these characters. Or, no, you, you pass the mantle. You can, you can pass them out because yeah. that, that's kind of what, what happens in the comic books sometimes. Yeah. There's, a, there's a new Iron Man. Cause, you it's know, like you can replace these characters, Don Cheadle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don Cheadle replaced uh, freaking, uh, what's his face? The dude from Empire. Yeah. 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 Terrence Howard, who also became Devil. Pay me more. You know what? We can find a new actor. <laughs> and we'll make a smart ass comment at the beginning of Iron Man yeah. 2. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> I'm here. Get over it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I mean, and even like Thor, you could figure something out. There's been multiple Thors. There's been multiple that. Thors. You, know, you could, you could set Eric Masterson, Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike. Beta Hulk. Ray Bill. Multiple Hulks. Multiple Hulks. Yeah. This is true. Ed Norton. I still think he was phenomenal. <laughs> he, even though I love Mark Ruffalo. I can't, I can't hate him. I mean, that, that, yeah, it, I, I personally think it was an upgrade. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And, I mean, but Ed still, Norton was not a definitely upgrade over Eric Bana, or so I hear, because I still have never watched that movie. Don't yeah. do it to yourself. Don't do it, right? <laughs> I know. Don't do it. And, and seriously, that'll push you over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but how fun would it be, like, you have a, a, a movie called, like, New Avengers, and you have Doctor Strange, and you have... See, that, that will... Oh, see, I would lose my shit. If, yeah. Like, if, like you know, because I, I know Hugh Jackman has said that the only way he'll ever play Wolverine again is if he gets to be an Avenger. Yeah. Because in the comic books, they actually did that where, yeah, where Spider-Man and Wolverine were Avengers alongside Cap and Iron Man. And that was one of my... I, that, that, I remember at that point, that replaced... I remember, well, because it was the same writer as Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. That replaced Ultimate Spider-Man. That was my favorite book yeah. at that time. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> Smart-ass Spidey, angry freaking Wolverine, <laughs> you know, with, 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 with Cap and, and freaking Iron Man and freaking... Luke Cage? <laughs> Luke Cage is an Avenger and he turned out to be the, he was like the oh, during that whole arc he was like the main character. Yeah. He became the leader of the Luke Cage became the leader of the Avengers yeah. at some point. That's yeah. that's how that's how crazy Bendis is and he made it work. He made it work. That's what I'm saying, like I think I think you would create this whole different you know, uh, Avengers thing. Where they could integrate the characters from the, the oh so they can integrate the characters from the Netflix shows that into these cool. new Avengers. That would be cool, but I don't know if they would ever do that because the way yeah, I don't know because that's the thing that's always it, it's so weird. It Feige's like like it's all connected, but it's separate. <laughs> like, you know, like, so what you're trying to tell me is they are separate but equal. <laughs> yes, I was I was avoiding that. <laughs> I know you were avoiding that. That's my job to say the inappropriate things. That I have one job on this on this show is I'm the yeah. per- crazy person who will say the things that we shouldn't say. <laughs> separate but equal. <laughs> Because I remember I think, well, through Daredevil, that you see the, the 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 newspaper pages yeah. of like, oh, you see, oh, Hulk Hulk destroys Harlem, you know, yeah. and then, oh, New York attacked by aliens. And it's like they were like, oh, the incident, the incident, the, in- the the incident with the aliens from the Avengers. It was the, the, the New York incident. Yeah. yeah, but I I think you know that would be the best option. I think you know, you. you you just keep it going. Or... Keep it going, and, and, and like I, 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 to make a sports analogy, you, you call up these Netflix heroes up from the minors yeah. <laughs> to the majors. <laughs> uh, to use a Latino music thing, it, it could be like uh, what's it called? Uh, Where are you going with this? The that old age. I, I, I'm Mexican only in name. Uh, Menudo. <laughs> Menudo. Oh, I, oh, God. I got a feeling. You know, like, like, in the back of my head, I'm like, is Sam talking about Menudo? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, the thing that's named after that nasty dish. <laughs> yeah. No, Menudo. That is shit, man. Which, so, the question is, which one of these guys is Ricky Martin? Which one of these guys? Because uh, for, for those who don't know, in Mexican music, there was a, there's a, it, I guess the, 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 one of the first boy bands, yeah, Menudo. <laughs> like, they just replaced members as they needed. Yeah. Like, oh, we're done with you. It was like Destiny's Child before Destiny's Child. 
<laughs> Ricky Martin gets kicked out for Daredevil or shit like yeah. that. <laughs> like, uh, uh, we're, we're, done, we're done with you, Chris Evans. Here comes Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Holy like, you know, I, I, we've, we're, we've had some weird ass references today. <laughs> But I think you can tell just really the, the the choices of the new shows that they're, they're coming out with. Can you see the, the, the Runaways? The Runaways. Uh, like Cloak and Dagger. Mm -hmm. It just kind of shows they're just... Now, now are, do those fall into the Marvel MCU? Yeah. Or... Oh, okay. Because yeah. I know I know Legion and then there's that other like mutant show that falls oh, under like the, the, the Fox. Yeah. Like the, uh, Gifted. The, those fall under the, the, the Fox umbrella. Yeah. Or where Fox and uh, and Marvel still continue to like stay at odds and like we don't want to work together. We don't want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But as I'm saying, like I, I feel like that just shows that they're willing to take more risks with like the stuff they have. Like, did you hear the other thing they announced? The, no, no. What did they announce? New Warriors. There's a new Warriors TV show coming out. Uh, really? Yeah. New you Warriors. 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 No, 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 no not not, not uh, New Warriors. It's a, it's a, it's a '90s comic. Oh, oh yeah. I thought we were talking about like the old seventies. No, 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 no. I, I had a feeling that's what you were thinking of. I'm like, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, not, 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 not forgetting. Oh God. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, they're they're gonna take more risks with that. They're gonna go. And... Well, yeah, I mean, I, after Guardians, they can do whatever the hell. Yeah, they can do... <laughs> if it's good, it'll work. Yeah. That that I I feel like that's that's what they've learned with these Netflix shows, and with Guardians, and with and to a lesser extent, Ant Man. Like, if if the movie is good. People will watch it. Yeah. If, it, if it if if it's entertaining, yeah. that's what that's what's most important. And they'll stick in Easter eggs for for, for hardcore nerds like yeah. us, like a like we'll be appeased, like you know, like during Guardians when you see the the face of ego on the planet. Black that black. was for that was for us. <laughs> <laughs> like when you see when the, when you when they kind of like pull back and you see the like Kurt Russell's face on the planet, kind of like kind of like weirdly, like uh, that was for nerds because that's that's literally how ego is in the comic books, where he's like, oh, oh I am a giant planet with a face on it. Yeah, <laughs> the goatee, like the final, like the, the continent is his goatee. <laughs> yeah. How about this for something? Stan Lee obviously had another cameo. In yeah, no, and probably one of the one goes. of the most meta cameos I, I feel. Yeah, he was basically saying that. And it's, it's the same Stan Lee in it's every the same every movie. Stan, Stan Lee in every single movie. It's, <laughs> so he's the same one that got uh, hit by the, by the Hulk, the Gamma. <laughs> the blood, by, yeah. by when he drank the drank, drank the bottle of the Mexican soda full of his, yeah. his blood. He delivered the mail to the. the, the he's the, a postal the, worker yeah. and a FedEx. Yeah, and, Tony Stank. In Guardians, he said, "Yeah, he was the FedEx guy." Yeah. So that to me, I think was probably the coolest part of all. Of it. uh, like, the, the, okay, this is all really it, tied in together. It's all tied together. Yeah. It's, it's the same Stan Lee. I'm, like, I'm everywhere. I'm omniscient. Was, I'm omnipresent. Was he talking to the Watcher? Yeah, he was on Watchers. That, that like I nerded it out. Yeah. Like I, 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 I full nerded out when I saw he was talking to Watchers. I, like because oh, they kind of, they hinted towards it earlier, like when you just see that the, when when, um, when Yondu and Rocket were doing their 1500 jumps through space. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You just see like Stanley with a bunch of Watchers. Like, oh, I remember I, I smacked you in the show, like. Watchers, watchers. Because yeah. I'm a, I'm a, like in the Marvel. Like I'm a big cosmic nerd. Like all Thanos, Adam Warlock, the Infinity Gems, all this cosmic stuff. That's like the stuff I really like. I, I grabbed onto when I was a kid. Like I, I love that stuff. Like because the first big story I read was the Infinity yeah, Gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. That's why this this whole movie thing has been kind of important to me because that was one of my first. You know. Yeah. Oh, speaking. I don't know. We ever talked about it. What? What's his name? Uh... Crap, from freaking Game of Thrones. Um, um uh, Dinklage. But, but, oh, who's Wait, he gonna? Dinklebot. He, he's in Infinity War. No. Yeah. Wait, wasn't he in freaking uh in in, in the Fox freaking yeah, Marvel universe? Yeah. Well, I mean Josh Brolin. You know. <laughs> well, Josh Brolin, he's gonna be in both universes, so yeah. why not? Who? And um, he, they're not saying who he's playing. Oh, this is another Martin Freeman thing, or like we don't know who Martin Freeman yeah. is. But. There was pictures of him at the airport going to Atlanta, uh -huh. and he had red hair. Red hair. He had bright red hair. Who's short with red hair? And they're saying he's what? playing Pip the Troll. <laughs> That's it. Wrap it up. We're done here. We're done. Quick question. You mentioned earlier. We're done here. Pip the Troll is going to be Peter fucking Dinklage? I mean... All right, <laughs> I'm on board. But okay, you have a. I'm sorry, I was too busy losing my mind over this because that's another, was, that's another one of my cosmic yeah. characters uh, that I love, the, the old Infinity Watch, because mm -hmm. you know Drax, Gamora, Adam Warlock, Pip, uh, and then I feel like I'm missing one. Oh. Drax, Gamora, Adam Warlock, Pip. Yeah. Yeah. There's there someone else who had a Moon Dragon. Moon Dragon. And then and then Thanos is the secret sixth member yeah. of the Infinity Watch. Woo! 
that's not going to happen in the Marvel no. movie universe. But you had a question. Did I'm your, sorry. Did your brain implode there, by the way? Right now, when he told me that, that yeah. oh, my brain just went collapsed in, into itself right now, like in like a singularity. But you had a question. You're talking about the old character, the question, as being mm-hmm. part of the Watchmen. Was his arch rival Alan Iverson? I'm going to throw things at you. I'm going to throw things at you. <laughs> Damn you, Sam Zia. <laughs> It's like your job here is to troll me. <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have one job, aside from making sure our audio sounds, uh, aside from getting us recorded, your other job is to troll me yeah. during the show. <laughs> the question is, is rival Alan Iverson? It's like, at this point, like if we were if we were in a PSN party on PlayStation 4, at this point I would have fired you. <laughs> I'd be like, Sam, you're fired. <laughs> Not fired from any particular job, you're just fired from life. <laughs> I, I am a walking HR department, and I decided, decided that you have been terminated. <laughs> Not from the show, just from life. You, you're here. As always, you can follow the show. <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Dre GP Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter. I will occasionally tweet. I actually tweeted today. I tweeted about the show today on the twits. Uh, at Dre GP Podcast. You can, if you want to see all three of us on a screen, uh, you can go to twitch.tv forward slash Dre GP Podcast. You can go to iTunes and you can download the show. If, uh, if for for those of us watching, for those of you watching on Facebook or Twitch, you can download the podcast version from iTunes. You find Dre's Geek Philosophy, uh, Dre's with an apostrophe between the E and the S to find it in your podcast app. And you can also go to SoundCloud, and you can find it there. If you're a person who hates Apple and everything they stand for, you can go to SoundCloud and search for Dre's Geek Philosophy as well. I feel like Sam has something to say. You can also dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. (laughs) You can follow that character at SamZ570. (laughs) You can follow Pete Molini at Nostalgic underscore Comics. East LA Books? Comic no. Con, Saturday. 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 East LA Comic Con. Mm-hmm. You can get your con- You'll see me there. You'll see Pete Malini there. Yep. You might see Xavier Bruce Sam's there for a couple hours with his wonderful stepdaughter, Lily. You, you, I'm going to be doing some stuff live from there. I will have my phone with me. I will have my batter, my phone charger with me. I'll be doing some live <laughs> things as Sam rubs his head against my head. <laughs> This is this is this is great for those of you watching on video. And those of you listening on iTunes, remember Facebook.com forward slash Dre GB Podcast. If you want to watch this, if you want to see my ridiculous face react to a head massage I'm getting from Executive Producer Sam Zia as he rubs my head. For Sam Zia, for Pete Molini, I am your host, Dre Cervantes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you all. Have yourselves a good night.